It is my absolute pleasure to bring out Malin from Capital One to discuss multi-agent AI workflows for enterprise use cases with VentureBeat's own Amelia. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, um, I know that it's a little late in the day, but this is going to be a very interesting conversation. Um, yeah, so we have um, Milind here, um, and he's going to be talking about how Capital One has been using multi-agent workflows. So a very good starting question, I think, is what is Capital One doing with Agentic AI? So great to be here. Um, Capital One has uh, always been uh, at the forefront of you know most of the technology waves, right? So whether it's cloud, you know, migrating mm -hmm. to the cloud, um, whether it's data you know, and data-driven decision making, whether it's machine learning models, you know, they've always uh, embraced them a lot. And so we see this as the next wave up, right? And so in terms of what we can do with AI. Um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities. You know, we have 100 million plus customers. There are a number of applications at Capital One that our customers use. And so when we think of improving the customer experience, right, yeah. delighting the customer, um, we think of what are the ways in which that can happen. Now, in many of these situations, you know, if you take a typical such application, there is the need to understand what the customer wants. Yes. And then, you know, there is what you can fulfill, right? In, you know, whether you are opening an account, you know, whether you want to know your balance, you know, whether you are trying to make a, a reservation to go, you know, test a vehicle, right? So, so there's a bunch of things that you can do yeah. that the customers want to do. And so how do you really, I mean, at, at the heart of this is just very simply, how do you understand what the customer wants? How do you understand what are the fulfillment mechanisms you have at your disposal? How do you bring you know, all the rigors of a regulated you know, entity yeah. like Capital One, um, all the policies, you know, all the business rules, uh, all the constraints, um, regulatory and otherwise, and how do you actually make that happen? Now, when we think of various ways in which that can um, take place, agentic AI is basically the next step for Capital One yeah. in that direction. Uh, just so we're clear, is it an agent that is facing the customer or something else? It, it can take various forms. Okay. So you could have applications where this entire technology uh, is to help the human agent help the customer, mm -hmm. or you could have uh, you know, applications in which this technology is directly facing yeah. the customer. Right? It, yeah. it can go both ways. Yeah. As a Capital One customer via acquisition, because I have a Discover card. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's purple. I love it. Um, how were you? Um, how did you think about designing all of these agentic applications? Because you have not just single agents, correct? You have multiple That's agents. That's right. That's right. So, so it's interesting. Uh, when we started this journey uh, uh, along our uh, approach to agent tech. Now, this was way before agentic became a buzzword. So you know, I can I can share with you that we started working on this uh, almost 15 months ago. Okay. And when we started designing it, I mean, you can you can actually design it in multiple ways. There's no one single answer, right? But uh, we started looking at this entire journey. You know, if we put a human there, right? What would the human do? How do our human agents? talk to our customers, you know, try to understand what they're doing. How do they iteratively problem solve? Because these are complex you know, conversations, mm -hmm. right? Complex, complex requirements, needs that our customers have. And there is a lot of trust, right? You're, you're talking to your financial institution. You know, it's a different kind of relationship. And so when we looked at how the humans do it, how they do reasoning, we were struck by you know, a few salient facts. You know, we, we, we thought that if we designed it using multiple logical agents, we would be able to mimic this human reasoning quite okay. well. Mm -hmm. And so that was the origin of, of why multiple yeah. agents. But then, then you ask yourself the question, okay, so what exactly do these different agents do? Like, why do you have four? Why not three? Yeah. Why not 20, right? And so we looked at that 
uh, we looked at a lot of customer experiences. We looked at our historic data, right? How these conversations had unfolded, where they go wrong, right? You want to really focus on, you know, where they go wrong, where they go right, um, how long do you take? Yeah. So what we figured out was, you know, the first thing that we needed to do was understand what the customer need is. And this can actually be a very iterative process, you know, in, in uh, LLM parlance, you know, it can take multiple turns, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. of conversation between the agent. So you understand what the customer wants. Then you want to plan an, a set of, a series of actions to fulfill that, right? And this planning has to be completely grounded in your uh, systems, right? In your tools that you have available, yeah. in the APIs that you have yeah. available, in the policy that you are allowed uh, to do that with. I, I right? guess especially because these will probably be customers asking about their um, their accounts, right? So they, you want it to be correct. You have to be correct. You yeah. have to be factual and you have to be accurate. You know, the bar of factuality and accuracy that a regulated entity and a financial entity mm -hmm. in specific, right, faces is very, very high mm -hmm. compared to, you know, yeah. you just want to go and find out <laughs> some some answer to some That's question true. on the web yeah. right and so 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 then there is this second agent logically which can take all the information from what was understood you know, plan a series of things right the the main breakthrough for us was realizing that this had to be dynamic so if you look at a uh, you know how a lot of people are using llms in this process they are really slapping the llms as a front end to do the same intent slot you know, mechanism mm -hmm. of what used to exist, yeah. right? And they're just using LLMs as classification of intent. Mm -hmm. But we realized from the beginning that that was not scalable. Yeah. And and so you had to come up with a dynamic plan. Now, once you come up with a dynamic plan, um, we were taking inspiration from how Capital One itself functions. So within Capital One, as I'm sure within other, other financial services, you have to manage risk. And then there are other entities that are independent mm, that observe you yeah. evaluate you question you audit you right and we thought that that was a really good idea for us to have an agent whose entire job was to evaluate what these first two agents do and evaluate that based on capital one policies mm -hmm. and rules and regulations and when it found uh, and even simulate right and say okay if i did this set of things that the planning agent is telling me to do do i end up with a state that's in, in you know in the correct state of where the customer needs to be yeah if it finds out that that's not the case it will kick back this process go yeah. back you know this is not right you shouldn't do this go back do it and so this is iterative you're basically treating the agents like human employees within your greater it's, organization it's exactly right it's like a team of experts yeah each of them has different expertise they come together mm -hmm. and they solve a problem what were the technical challenges in creating that type of design for an agentic system? That's, it's going to be touching on a lot of different data within the organization. There's a lot of back and forth that's going to happen. I imagine there was a lot that you had to kind of work on to make that flow smoothly. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So some of the challenges are data related. Right? Some of the challenges are um, related to the APIs and the tooling, right? How can an I invoke an API in a certain context, right? Because context matters. Uh, some of the challenges are related to how do I get the accuracy of this entire disambiguation process to yeah. the planning process to be so highly accurate? Yeah. And, and so we have multiple iterations of experimentation, you know, testing, evaluation, human in the loop, right? All the right guardrails, right, that we need to have. Uh, that that needs to happen before we could actually come into the marketplace with something like this. But one of the biggest challenge was we didn't have any precedent. Like we couldn't go and say, oh, somebody else did it this way. How did that work out, right? So there was that element of uh, novelty. We were doing yeah. it for the first time. Um, and so the other challenge was how do you actually make this happen uh, while delighting the customer? So in the sense that... Uh, one disambiguation like this, you know, one series of disambiguations like this can actually invoke the underlying large language model mm -hmm. 15 times. Very accurate, but very expensive yeah. from a temporal perspective, right? Yeah. The latency perspective. So we had to do a lot of work. Our first prototype would take a minute. That was not acceptable, of course, right? Oh, I was like, oh, a minute. Yeah. <laughs> 
So when we finally launched the service, we had actually, you know, reduced latency significantly, and you know that was a to be more real time, much more okay. near real time. Uh, I'm I'm curious about the um, the criteria you developed to maybe choose the types of models or tools to build that out. Um, there are a lot that's available, of course, but did you want to use tools from uh, other vendors, or did you build a lot of um, the tools and models yourselves, just like what were the criteria that kind of went into the de decision-making process? That's, that's a great question. So I would separate models from the-, the, the Yes, state, yes, right? okay. And so let me answer that question for each of those, right? In terms of models, you know, we are uh, very keenly tracking academic and industrial research in this. And, you know, we, we uh, present at some of these conferences. So we are very much uh, abreast of what the state of the art is. And we have taken uh, the, the approach of leveraging open weights models rather than, you know, closed, closed mm -hmm. models, mm -hmm. because that allows us to bring them in, you know, then customize them significantly with our data. You know, at that point, our data advantage becomes our AI yeah. advantage. Uh, so that, that goes to the model part of it. In terms of the stack itself, it's a combination of the two. So, you know, we actually adopt some of the open source uh, tool chains there. Um, we leverage heavily the NVIDIA inference stack mm -hmm. because we find that, you know, working closely with them, we are yeah. able to get the performance that yeah. we, we need. And so it's a combination of open source, but also some inbuilt technologies, yeah. you know, in-house. So there's a lot of fine tuning that you're really doing to to customize basically the models. That's right. That's right. Speaking of Nvidia, you have a partnership with Nvidia, and so talk to me a little bit about that partnership and how has that helped you maybe overcome your own technical challenges in building out the, um, the multi-agent workflow? Yeah, I would, I would, I would love to share that. So. When I was at NVIDIA, Capital One was always one of the uh, financial services institutions that we would find was always adopting the latest NVIDIA technology. And you know they were up to some great work in the recommendation system and fraud detection and so on and so forth, right? So when I joined Capital One, you know we realized that some problems that we had to solve uh, because we were the first ones to actually uh, put in production this kind of a multi-agentic system, we uh, had to go to NVIDIA and share with them, you know, some of the gaps that existed in, you know, their libraries, right? Or we had to work closely with NVIDIA to say, you know, could you prioritize, you know, some of these features for the, you know, Triton uh, server for the NVIDIA Tensor RT LLM uh, that they have? And, you know, to their credit, like they work very closely with us because for them it's a win-win, right? We bring problems to them yeah. sooner, yeah. but we are not the only ones who are going to face these problems. They're pretty much going to get lift mm -hmm. with every other enterprise customer yeah. if they fix it, solve yeah. it with us. Um, I'm curious to understand, because you talked about fine tuning and kind of basically retraining a lot of models. So um, I'm very interested to know about how Capital One is approaching maybe inference at scale or tr um, using a lot of these agents to scale because it's you're a large company, you have a lot of customers. This must be top of mind. It is top of mind. It is indeed top of mind. And so there are different aspects to how we are dealing with this, right? So some part of it is we have a very, very... Uh, potent AI organization, right? Yeah. We have applied researchers and, and data scientists and AI engineers working together. So what that gives us is that gives us the ability to uh, do a lot of things with these models that otherwise people won't do. So for example, you know, we will end up distilling models down to sizes oh, that make them very efficient, right? Now, in this multi-agentic workflow, uh, there are a lot of design choices and experimentation that we do. For example, right, the understanding agent is the bulk of our uh, cost because that's the one that has to disambiguate it's, it's, with the user. It's usually item. also a bigger model. It's a bigger yeah. model, right? And so when we try to take that bigger model and distill it down, uh, we actually get a lot of bang for our buck. Right. Okay. So that's just one type, right? Then there are other types in terms of speculative decoding, multi-token prediction, um, then then disaggregated prefill, right? So there are so many uh, interesting ways in which we can actually optimize this. Mm -hmm. um, and we are actually doing all of the above. Interesting. Um, we have about um, 
four-ish minutes left, and so there's still a lot to talk about. But I'm also interested in knowing what is kind of on the horizon. What can we um, see in deployment of like a customer-facing agent? Yeah. So the one that came out first was Chat Concierge. So for those of you who may not have seen it or experienced it, uh, this is our first multi-agentic workflow that was deployed um, through our auto uh, business. And so what that does is uh, the auto business, uh, financial services auto business, has uh, capabilities that dealers use, mm -hmm. car dealers, right, vehicle dealers use. And uh, through this new capability, we are now able to support their end customers. Okay. And these end customers are able to go and look at the inventory that the dealer has, you know, schedule test drives. So if I was looking for a car... You should definitely look at one of our dealerships. Uh, okay. <laughs> I live in New York, so there's no need for a car, but maybe. Who you knows? might still want to buy one just for, you know. Um, and, and then when they do that, you know, what, what our dealers are finding out is, you know, there's a 55% improvement in some of the metrics in terms of engagement, in like terms of Like people are more interested and more are asking serious, more questions. Serious leads, right? I mean, oh, in that okay. business, serious leads is the yeah. you know, important metric, right? And so they are able to actually generate much better serious leads mm -hmm. through this conversational, natural, easier, you know, 24-7 uh, oh. agents that are working for the... So for all those customers. late nights, my car is broken down, I want to look for a new car... I am, how do I finance this? At midnight, yeah. you know, chat concierge is the way for you to go. <laughs> uh, but that's that's the first wave, right? Uh, we, uh, of course, you know, you can imagine, right, that uh, there is uh, travel, right? Mm -hmm. Capital One has a travel business. Mm -hmm. you know? And so we would like to bring this capability to all our customer yeah. facing engagements but we want to do it in a well managed way yeah. which means you know there's a lot of risk gates there there's mm -hmm. a lot of card rates there there's a lot of internal testing yeah. and you know we have human in the loop when we need to so that we can feel confident enough yeah. our regulators can feel confident enough mm -hmm. so, it's, so a, it'll be, it's a journey be like maybe a venture card you serving like i want to find a good lounge that is supported by my card that would happen absolutely and if you go to jfk there's a new one for you I, I know, I saw, I was looking for a lounge. Um, I, just widening um, the scope a little bit. Um, you, of course, um, have an agent. That's what we've been talking about for a while. But what do you think we haven't, or people aren't really talking about in terms of enterprise AI agents that is very important to you and that Capital One is definitely maybe leading or helping to move forward. Yeah, so when I see like typical use of agents, you know, it's, you know, API calling tool, you know, tool chains, tool calling, et cetera, right? Uh, how we are doing it is we are deeply integrating our, uh, you know, our systems, right? And, and the deep integration um, is tricky. Uh, it's complicated, right? And you need to have a lot of infrastructure in place in terms of the APIs, their metadata. Uh, you need to have a lot of uh, clarity in policy. You need to have a lot of clarity across channels, right? The information that is available across channels for it to be consistent. So a lot of this homework needs to happen. And then the other part that we feel particularly proud about, you know, I was talking about these various agents. The evaluator agent is some of the secret sauce for us mm -hmm. because that's where we bring a world model. That's where we simulate what happens if a series of actions were to be actually yeah. executed, right? And so that kind of rigor which we uh, need to do because we are a regulated yeah. enterprise, um, I think that is actually putting us on a great sustainable yeah. and robust trajectory. Mm -hmm. So I expect a lot of enterprises to actually eventually go Perfect. to that point. All right. Well, that's all for us. Thank you so much. Thank you.